I'm with Evan Levine from the Hatikva Project. Now, Evan, what is the Hatikva Project? Hatikva Project is an Israeli nonprofit organization that seeks to build up the local believers in Yeshua in Israel to meet the needs of the poor, the widows, and the orphans among the believers in Israel, and also to serve all of Israel as Yeshua commanded us to love our neighbor as ourselves. So we do a couple primary things in Israel. One is we work throughout the community of believers all throughout the land and work with many of the congregations, local congregations, and we help meet the needs of the financially disadvantaged among the body of Messiah in Israel. Uh, we partner them with financial counselors. We help with direct aid. We've been doing that for seven years. Two years ago, we began a process to launch a new arm of the nonprofit, which is to provide dental care to Israelis. Dental care is not covered under the Israeli health insurance over the age of, it was 12, now they've moved it up a little bit, but over a certain age, dental care is not covered. And so it's quite a common situation in Israel for people to have dental needs that would cost them even up to a year of their salary to finance the care they would need. And we came to answer that problem. So in November of 2015, we opened a dental clinic called the Hatikva Clinic. Uh, and here we receive needy patients and we perform um, all manners of treatment. It's a full service dental clinic at subsidized prices so they can afford it. And we treat Holocaust survivors for free as well. Mm. Uh, and when we started as an organization and why we started? We were started through a partnership with a ministry in America called Promise Keepers that also had a desire to see this kind of work happen in Israel. And in 2007, when my wife and I moved here, uh, they were part of helping us to launch that. Uh, and then we were here for a little while. We learned Hebrew. We just got our feet underneath ourselves until it was time to actually launch an Israeli nonprofit organization, a separate organization, which we did three years ago. And so it's been a process of getting everything uh, up and running. But basically, 2009 marked the very beginning as we moved to Israel for the first time and have been slowly building towards all that we've accomplished since then. So about seven years uh, running, the ministry has been either in the process of being set up or has been functioning. And uh, the dental ministry itself began about a year ago, and we're looking forward to expanding soon as well. Have you really seen God provide in the midst of setting up a ministry here in the land? Absolutely. It's really been amazing because we're not, we're not in any way bashful about our faith. It says on our website that we're doing this because when Yeshua asked the rabbis what the greatest commandment was, they said to love the Lord your God with all your heart and then to love your neighbor as yourself. And we're doing this as an expression of our faith to, to Israel to show the love of Yeshua, which isn't something that you typically say up front when you're trying to accomplish ministry in Israel. But we found that when you're bold in your faith, you are who you are and you provide value to society and you do it with excellence, that people are willing to receive it. So every door that we've needed legally to be opened for the Ministry of Health or the uh, Ministry of Welfare has been opened um, through our fundraising efforts, which are primarily focused in America right now. Um, but we're looking to expand them into the European theater as well. Through our fundraising efforts, we've been able to cover the budget for the clinic. We don't have volunteer dentists because we're not allowed to bring them in. We're only allowed to have licensed Israeli staff, so we have a fully paid uh, local medical staff that get competitive wages. Um, and we take, we take huge losses on the subsidized patients that we have to make up through donations, but that makes it possible for us to offer affordable care and absolutely the lord has provided uh we we haven't had any true financial challenges since we opened god has just blessed and, and met all of our needs uh, the dental clinic is it actually helping to support the ministry here so richer patients pay for more work to help subsidize the ones that can't afford it all right it's a very good question so we set it up purposefully to be able to do just that which is it's not only a clinic for the needy it's also just a high standard private practice clinic uh, that anybody can come to. Uh, so we have the ability to receive full price patients and offer treatments at a price where we do make a profit on that. And that helps us to subsidize the care of the needy. As we sit today, though, I would say around 15 to 20% of the full operating budget of the clinic is coming via the patients paying here. So there's still a huge fundraising burden. But the more the practice is established and the longer we're here, we envision uh, having a lot more private paying clientele, which will eventually uh, greatly reduce the fundraising burden to keep the practice going. Mm. And you said you ministered Holocaust survivors, so they get their care for free. Yeah, Holocaust survivors are in a special category. We, get that, we treat them completely for free. Um, we're able to do that because we've had very generous donors and organizations that want specifically to give to that. 
that give to cover all of our costs. So we don't make any money on them, but we, through partnerships of donors, we're able to cover all of the clinic's costs. So we can treat a Holocaust survivor everything they need to have done, and it doesn't cost us anything. They cover the actual cost of operation. Do they ask you why you're doing this for me? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so we're just very open with it. We talk about our faith if they ask. Uh, it's very important to say legally nobody is required to believe anything to come here. We receive people of all faith persuasions. As long as they're Israeli citizens, they're well, welcome to come and receive the subsidized or the free care. They actually have to sign something saying that we're not requiring them to hear anything. Or to, but absolutely, the question comes up. And um, we're always happy to say that it's because of our faith. So uh, we found that the Holocaust survivors in particular, it's just, it can be a struggle, as you probably know as well, to get things done working through the bureaucratic Israeli government channels, even to get aid that, that is set aside for people. There's always a million hoops to jump through. Because we're not a part of the government system, uh, we're actually able to cut through all that. And it's very simple for them to just come. They get care. We get notes from them. We get letters. Uh, we get letters from their family telling how much they appreciate the fact that we just treated them like human beings. We took them in and we cared for them. And even to that point, the Ministry of Welfare in Jerusalem has now started using us as their dental care provider. So now the Ministry of Welfare in Jerusalem sends all their needy patients to us. So we've, because we don't have to rely on government funding, but we rely on funding from private donors, we don't have to deal with any of the red tape. We can just bring people in, treat them, and bless them. So has that built a very good relationship with the Holocaust survivors, and do they feel comfortable about sharing their stories? I w we definitely have a good relationship with, with the ones that have come in. About them sharing their stories, there's so much depth and pain and years and scarring to their stories that I wouldn't say that they open up to share what they've been through most, uh, especially you know, when you go to the dentist, it's hard to talk because somebody's hands are always in your mouth. <laughs> but, um, but we definitely feel a very warm connection with them. Mm. Are there many poor and needy people within the Christian community here in Israel? Uh, within the community of believers in Israel, there are a lot of needy, but there's a lot of needy all throughout Israel. Israel has the highest poverty rate of any westernized country, according to the OECD. So we have a lot of needs, and a lot of those needs specifically are acute in the area of dental care because it's a, it's a gap, if you would, in the government safety net because it's not provided for so uh, even people that have two incomes and have regular jobs in Israel, people that have regular jobs in Israel, they struggle every month to pay the bills, and the majority of those average working families are in debt. And so dental care is, I mean, it's a luxury for them. And so we're, uh, we're providing it in a way that they can actually, it's, we, we consider it a necessity. You can't go for a long time with a seriously um, negative medical situation in your mouth before it affects your overall health. Uh, so we see it as a necessity in that way. Uh, so the, there's, there's need through all the different sections of society, not believers and unbelievers as far as it comes to dental care and need in general. Mm. Are some of the believers in the community persecuted and that's why they're living in poverty? My honest answer to that is I think that's a storyline that gets um, overblown and overplayed. There are, there are instances of persecution that come based on faith, but... If you're asking my personal opinion, I think it's the easiest time in the history of the nation of Israel to be a believer and to be open about it. Mm -hmm. um, I find that the average Israeli is completely open to having a conversation about the gospel. Um, I have them frequently on a regular basis. We're a boldly, openly Messianic Jewish dental clinic in the center of Jerusalem, and we haven't received any persecution whatsoever. So I don't attribute, and we work with needy believers all throughout Israel, and I would say that 99% of the time their financial need comes from simple financial circumstances and is not a result of their faith. Mm. Uh, do you work with the local church? The local church, can you define that? You mean like the local body of Israeli believers? Yeah. Yeah, we do. It's just part of being a believer in Israel. Everybody's sort of networked with each other. Everybody sort of understands each other. So we work with the local congregations all throughout Israel um, very closely on the aid cases of believers. Uh, so we have pastoral oversight and that sort of thing and the financial counseling that we need. And uh, the congregations also are one of the main uh, sources that refer to us patients. Do you work with both Arab and Jewish believers? Yeah. Uh, the, the clinic itself it has a staff of six people, two of whom are uh, Arab Christians mm -hmm. and the rest of whom are Jewish believers. And we will uh, receive as patients at the clinic anybody that's an Israeli citizen. So it doesn't matter if they're Arab or Jewish. As long as they're a citizen, we can treat them here. Um, and we are happy to receive requests on behalf of both Arab believers and Jewish believers for the financial aid that we provide. 
Are you making a difference here in the community in Jerusalem amongst the believers? Uh, we're making a huge difference, I think, in a couple of ways. One is we're leading by example. I believe that the time has come for believers to step out of the shadows in Israel and to be open about who we are and to step into the public sphere like we're doing with medical care. Mm. This is the first believing medical practice in the history of the nation of Israel. There's never been a, believe, a Messianic Jewish dental clinic in the, in the history of the nation. So I think that's having an influence on local believers, giving them confidence to follow our example, that they can be bolder in their faith and take greater steps. And then on the community as a whole, we're having a huge impact. Like I said, the Ministry of Welfare refers all their patients to us. We're getting calls from much larger organizations that want to also send the people that apply to them for aid to come to us for dental care. So I think the impact is huge and it's having a ripple effect. And uh, we look forward to opening more clinics throughout the rest of Israel so we can impact other communities as well. Why do you do what you do? Simple. I feel compelled of the Lord to be a part of the restoration of my people, to be a part of bringing the gospel back to the nation of Israel, and to see the people of Israel cared for, healed, and come to know their Messiah. And what's your prayer finally for the Messianic church here in the land, in the Holy Land in Israel? That we would double in size and then double in size and then double in size again. That we would be the head and not the tail. That we would make the name, you know, the name of Yeshua, the name of Jesus, is famous in Israel for all the wrong reasons. It's the most hated name in Israel. We want to make, I want to see the Messianic body become such a force for good in the nation that we make the name of Yeshua famous for all the right reasons. That we change the perception of the nation about who he is from somebody who's outside the pale of Judaism to a prophet, dare I say, Messiah of Israel who brings blessing to his people and not curse. Do you think that's actually beginning to happen now? I do, absolutely. Ezekiel 36 says that very clearly that God first will bring the, the physical Jewish people back to the nation of Israel. And then once we're back here, which has already occurred, that he'll pour out his Holy Spirit upon us as he softens our hearts. Uh, that he softens our hearts and then he pours out his Holy Spirit. That's the order. Uh, so I see the heart softening happening everywhere I go. I don't think there's ever been a period where people have been as open to hear, just to be involved in conversations about Jesus, about Yeshua, to hear the gospel and to, to entertain the idea. And so I think we're on the cusp of a, of a real breakthrough. Okay, Evan, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on.